side. Okay, the head of the prison and probation service has admitted the rehabilitation system isn't working as well as it should be. Michael Spur has said the new arrangements that were brought in in England and Wales in 2015 are no more than basic signposting. At the moment, probation services for low and medium risk offenders are outsourced to 21 community rehabilitation companies. Well, we can talk now to our guest, Paul Harriet, who spent four years in jail for supplying drugs. She says coming out of prison was equally as traumatic as the prison sentence and now works for a rehabilitation charity. Bob Neal is the Conservative Chair of the Justice Committee. Jacob Tass is the Chief Executive of NACR, which is a national charity that works with prisoners. Okay. Uh, let's uh, start with you, Jacob. Why, why are we in this situation at the moment? Yeah, first of all, I would like to say I'm chief executive of NACRO, NACRO. So to make sure that that is clear. But uh, Thank we're, you for we're, we're, we're in a situation, um, there has been a great ambition when this program was launched, um, but it's very complicated and there are lots of players. And I think the magnitude of the task at hand uh, might not have been uh, necessarily understood or managed well. There's these um, changes, uh, first the probation trusts were um, built and then uh, put together and then there was a big outsourcing operation, so a competitive process. The people on the ground, the probation officers, were unclear of what was going to happen, who would own them and then when that got clarified, there was a lot of change again. So office building, people had to move offices, uh, computer systems and uh, so it's a massive change in the first place. But I think also in terms of the contracting has it been, as it's been set out, has been very much concentrating on, on making sure the, you could argue, the bureaucracy gets right instead of the focus of resettlement, rehabilitation of the uh, person so that they don't commit a crime again and we can have a safer society altogether. Robert, shouldn't there have been a pilot as soon as this came in? Absolutely there should have been. And I'm pleased well, that before they it came in, I should well, say. That, that's something that the Justice Committee was saying before the general election when we had evidence. It was done too quickly. Uh, it wasn't tested. Uh, an awful lot of the systems, as Jacob has just said, um, are not joined up properly. Should have been recognised. The idea in principle is a lot to commend it, but it's not been delivered uh, uh, thoroughly. And so that's why uh, we're reinstating our full inquiry into this, because we need the government to get this right now. Because it's quite striking when Mr. Spurs said, um, we're just signposting people. Well, we have very compelling evidence of that back at the beginning of the year. And somebody said, well, you know, we used to give people £46 uh, for a, 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 a resettlement grant when they left prison. Now we give them £46 and a leaflet with a load of phone numbers. That's not helping people through into getting resettled into jobs, homes, work, education. That's not being delivered. Yeah. Is the fact that these services are being outsourced to 21 companies at the heart of the problem, is that right when, when profit then is a factor in providing this service? Actually, I don't have an issue with the principle of outsourcing. It works in many areas. But it's got to be done properly. The contracts have got to be written right. And they've got to actually be done in a way that, as Yakima again says, you're not simply ticking the box, but you're actually um, remembering that you're not selling things off a stall in a market you're actually dealing with changing people's lives and that requires much more throughput, much more joined up working between uh, companies, between let's say the community rehabilitation company at the National Prison Service, because the split between the two is artificial, much more continuity from when people are in prison, getting advice to when they leave, involving in the health service, the local authorities, you need to join the whole thing up a lot more. Paula, what was your experience like of the probation service and coming um, out of prison? So I was on probation before transforming rehabilitation and um, my experience was then um, that there wasn't sufficient emphasis on rehabilitation and so um, at that point probation officers were known as offender managers so managing people's risk in the community more than having a specific focus around rehabilitation so absolutely TR was something that uh, I think for many prisoners and, and people in prison and on probation absolutely welcome putting rehabilitation back at the heart of the endeavor because coming out of prison is incredibly traumatic um, there are you know you've got hurdles to get over around um, housing are you are you going to be deemed that you've made yourself intentionally homeless and therefore um, are not eligible for housing how do you access mental health support that's absolutely overwhelmed already 
Um, are you going to be prioritised? How are you going to manage your benefits? We've heard so many stories about Universal Credit quite recently about massive delays. I, I work uh, now for Revolving Doors Agency, working with people with lived experience of these issues, and they constantly report massive delays around getting their benefits and accessing services. And probation is overwhelmed uh, with these issues. And um, I think there are some, all these structural issues um, around how it all knits together. Uh, the ambition hasn't been fully realised. But there are wider issues in the community other than probation failing uh, people in prison. I think it's a systemic failure around the lack of joined up thinking um, and the, to ask probation to try to solve benefit delays, to ask probation to but try also, to solve it, it, housing delays. Coming out of prison don't get the support they need, they end up back in prison Absolutely. and the prison system is already under immense pressure. We're talking about probation today but we've seen rising in jails, mm -hmm. overcrowding. This just adds to that list of problems. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's right. One of the problems I think we've got here as well is it's against that lack of that joined up thing. So, for example, housing is really critical in rehabilitation. Some housing um, authorities have policies which don't work well for offenders. That's not joined up properly. Mm -hmm. uh, the other bit of probation is finding alternatives to custody when it's appropriate. And we had evidence from the Magistrates Association saying, well, often we're uncomfortable about imposing community sentences because we don't actually have a guarantee as to what sort of pro programs are going to be delivered. So you've got to have a credible alternative to custody where, where you can, and you've got to have a system where people in prison are having the education, the training, yeah. the rehabilitation work, and then it's followed through at the moment. Often you hand it over to a wholly different set of people, and the yeah. information isn't transferred properly. Paula, what would you need? Final point from you. What's the solution for you? You need intensive support. You need um, a place to go when you're experiencing problems that's safe to discuss those in a one-to-one -one human relationship. You don't want supervision over the phone. You don't want supervision in groups. You want to build a relationship with somebody who understands the difficulties that you're facing and uh, will walk with you along the way. Okay, thank you all for speaking to us. The Ministry of Justice spokesperson has said steps are being taken to improve the quality of probation services. They told us we have already taken action to change the contracts with community rehabilitation companies and we continue to work with them to ensure they deliver services that have the correct levels of supervision and support for offenders. They said public protection remains their priority.